Alors, Napoléon s'est fait... Ici. Émilie, elle est avec nous. King George III in coronation robes. Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should under no circumstances hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. P.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. Ça se complique puisqu'on sait que tout le monde demande depuis le départ. Donc euh, on nous précise dès le début du jeu, méfiez-vous de tout le monde. A letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. He only has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But. King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. A Byzant from the Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era. Duchesse, vous pourrez informer le roi Georges du soutien du Saint-Père. Nous vous aiderons à financer le recrutement de régiments d'émigrés royalistes afin de lutter contre la France. Votre ami, son éminence Giuseppe Piaggi. Deux hmm. coils circle the lock. Dear Gregory, thank you for the information. I've managed to find out about the names you gave me. George Washington is a man you can trust. In spite of his obvious talent for politics, he has remained upright and honest. On the other hand, as you may well know, he is already doing business with Lord Mortimer. It will be more difficult to approach him. Napoleon Bonaparte was unknown to me until today. He's a passionate young French soldier for whom Mortimer predicts a promising future. Take heed, he is a man of conviction, which to my mind makes him potentially dangerous. As for Sarah de Richet, what more is there to say? You already know each other. She was apparently invited by Lord Mortimer about an ongoing matter in Paris that concerns a receiver in stolen art. See you soon. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. All right, I've retrieved everything. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. 
Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there from what I can tell. Je peux pas fouiller, j'ai pas la compétence. Ou alors c'est parce que j'ai plus de Devil's Thorn, to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. for you, Louis. I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. Death came quickly. You can be assured of that. If such a senseless act can happen here, then none of us is truly safe anywhere. Lord Mortimer must be mortified that one of his guests could have committed such an act, don't you think? He is indeed very upset about it. It's only natural after such a violent murder. Violent? What do you mean? Elizabeth was stabbed nine times. Oh my god, Louis. How awful. The murderer must have had a serious grudge against her to set upon her like that. It must have been a crime of passion. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? Uh, I must admit, Louis, I, I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I hear you were in discussions with the Holy See. Oh, either His Eminence can't keep his tongue from wagging, or you've been poking your nose where you shouldn't, sir. Even so, Emily. You're raising a royalist army. That's no small matter. And you are straying from the subject. Is there anything else you wanted to ask me? I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Grey silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Lydia. I... Do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any grey silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister, since we wear the same clothes. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. Thank you, Emily. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. Elle a des avec nous, donc. Golden elixir, consumed without excess. Grammar of Port Royal. Ah. The artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world. At least une partie of it. Bon, Emily, c'est fait. Qu'on a. 
Duke Manuel Godoy. Pourquoi ça Je ne sais pas. Je devais normalement avoir accès à toutes les chambres. des potions par là parce que ça me bloque un petit peu pour les... pour les questions. George Washington. Idem. C'est trouvé... A map of Vermont. Faut vraiment tout fouiner. En plus qu'il est là en plus. On est très impoli. On rentre, on fouille, on lui parle après. Portrait of George Washington. Que de luxe, hein, avoir son propre portrait dans sa chambre. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. Washington about trade deals. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young. But rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. Greetings, William. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and, well, who doesn't, Mr. President. Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. 
Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm a spring chicken now. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry, but that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened, and I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry, countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Okay. Bon. Suivant. What do you want from me, Deriche? Greetings. It's fallen to me. Cut the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. A 
pattern with four circles. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelously well, and little Pierre will soon be walking. Some of them still sometimes suffer nightmares about their parents on the scaffold, but I expect they will cease in due course. Should you decide to send us more, please note that another 20 beds will soon be ready. The children and myself will never thank you enough. Long live the Republic. Long live France. Sister Marie Allen. All right, I've retrieved everything. The Massacre of the Innocents, but by Van Harlem. I think that Mortimer likes to play mind games with his guests. J'ignore si nous nous reverrons, je suis prisonnier aujourd'hui, piégé par mes propres décisions, tu dois être protégé, mon avenir est perdu, mais toi tu peux encore être sauvé. Quelle que soit la rancœur que tu auras contre moi, sache que j'ai pactisé avec le diable que je pensais maîtriser. Je croyais que je connaissais les monstres, mais ce que j'ai fait pour la France n'est rien comparé à ce dont ils sont capables. Aujourd'hui je ne vois pas d'issue, les mâchoires se referment sur moi, je t'aime maintenant et à jamais. Lettre d'amour, non, c'est pas. Elle n'est pas signée. Est-ce que je peux prendre quelque chose là parce que j'ai pas de. Dear friend, please come and join us. We must meet about the ongoing operations in Paris. A boat will be waiting for you in Calais and will take you to Dover in England. From there, a carriage will take you to the port of Tintagel, where a frigate will be waiting for you and other guests, so you can meet up with me on my island as quickly as possible. I await your arrival. Lord William Mortimer. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. Nice decor for a revolutionary tribunal judge's room. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. I'd like to talk about the letter you're writing. What woman is it addressed to? Who says it's a woman? I'm not saying any more. There's no point you insisting. All right. Have you finished? No. Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions.
I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all! Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right! The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations, you've wrapped up the investigation. Il est compliqué, lui. All right, have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Let's get right to it. Are you Elizabeth Adams' murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Hmm. Goodbye, sir. We shall meet again. Probably. Il est pas net, Monsieur de Pérou. Il nous reste qui euh, à interroger là? Napoléon l'a fait, donc on était dans ce sens. Pérou, c'est fait. Cardinal Piatti, on peut pas rentrer. Euh, je pense qu'on a fait le tour à l'étage. On pourrait peut-être aller voir en bas. Peut-être monter pour aller faire mon rapport. Ça doit être ça. Alors, euh, on va quand même interroger, euh, reparler à, à son éminence. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble. It's uh, probably nothing. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Perrault. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Donc là, on n'en apprend pas plus du tout. On va aller faire notre rapport. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. Will you remind me of the facts we already know about? Elizabeth Adams was killed last night. But Piaggi was with Holm and I until late at night. As for Bonaparte and Washington, they left us after midnight. Both tired. Okay. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. Really. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. 
I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. Yet he told me that you had spoken and that you hadn't been able to reach an understanding. Hmm, that's putting it mildly. Monsieur Bonaparte is one of those guys who only understands people who think like he does. Ah, I see what you mean. He is indeed rather inflexible when it comes to certain subjects. But I am still of the opinion that you can manage to get along. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you've come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? If only my mother had trusted me, but she remained very mysterious. I'd have been delighted to answer your question. Is this usual for her? As head of the order, secrets are her bread and butter, as you can imagine. That said, it's the first time she hasn't let me in on the reason for her trip. And it intrigues me, to tell you the truth. Well, I'm sure that Sarah will explain everything once she reappears. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Volder, and myself. You forget Elizabeth Adams, my lord. That's true. But Gregory and I arranged it so that they wouldn't run into each other. I, I thought it had worked. Do you think that your mother felt she was in danger because of Elizabeth? It's possible. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jesse, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. My mother must have undoubtedly taken great pleasure in these exchanges. She always was one to appreciate broadening her knowledge. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. 
It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the siege of Saint Jean d'Acre. Unfortunately, my lord, the Crusades are not my chosen field. Well, it doesn't matter. You have plenty of time to learn. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. Allez à la chambre de la tour. Si, c'est la chambre de la... De la scène du crime, non Alors. On est dans la chambre de la tour. Ok. Chercher des indices. On va chercher. Une pièce de collection. Et j'ai plus de... Si. Hop. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize your love of riddles there. Mm -hmm. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. What is this disc? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. Caravaggio had taken magnificent command of black and the play of colors too. Paul facing an ordeal. The 
curtains of his illusions being raised and receives the light from his savior. appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. Open sesame. It's open. Ça sent pas bon cette histoire. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. The New Testament. I believe this is the book my mother referred to when calling upon the Lord. Hmm. I guess I'll just come back later. Ouais, on lira les, on lira ça plus tard. St. John, painted by Guido Rini. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. St. Mark from the collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. Honey, the remedy of the gods. There are burnt papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says, we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? À ma Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. St. 
Paul painted by Guido Rini. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code, there, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code, there, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? Alors, dans le bouquin qu'on a trouvé sur les apôtres là. Ah. Alors, les évangiles selon Saint Paul. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E, I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? Suivez la piste laissée par votre mère dans la Bible. Nous devons trouver un moyen plus sûr. Non, 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 chapitre 11, verset. Heureuse que vous ayez trouvé cette note, j'avais peur que le code des deux groupes de pèlerins ne vous déroute. Récupérez le livre où vous savez et cachez-le où personne ne le retrouvera, c'est impératif. J'attends votre réponse cachée derrière le plus jeune apôtre. C'était le cas. The painting looks like it's been taken down recently. But what was my mother said that she would wait for an answer hidden behind the apostle? Ah, of course. There's something written behind the painting. On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? St. John is the only apostle painted in this gallery who hasn't got a beard. Hey, wait! That means it's him. He's the youngest apostle. Right. This painting is therefore associated with the answer which E had to give to my mother. Now, I just need to know how to recover the answer. They should add a companion to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code. The one mother set up with the pilgrims. What's this? a group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to, and now John is telling them prophecies? Alors là... Un à gauche, deux à droite. It's Saint John, painted by Guido Rini. chest with the occult symbol representing air. There's 
There's nothing worth noticing here. No, nothing of value here. Little characters are engraved on the chest of drawers under the urn. The sentence in Hebrew. St. Mark from the collection of the apostles by Guido Rini. There's nothing worth noticing here. It's too cumbersome for me to unhook here, but judging by the dust, it hasn't been moved for months, if not years. There are finger marks, deliberately drawn in the dust, eight in all. Amber crystals. to their left and three to their right to complete their ranks. I imagine it applies to their code, the one mother said about the pilgrims. What's this? A group of pilgrims who Paul was talking to and now John is telling them prophecies? On the second day, the pilgrims will listen to the prophecy of the young apostle. They shall add one companion to their left and three to their right to complete their rank. What does it mean? It's St. John, painted by Guido Rini. <laughs> <laughs> 